Hey, this is Tony with Salt Strong, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you what's in my tackle box. I get this question quite often. You know, a lot of people wonder, what exactly do I bring on a trip? Whether it's in my own kayak, or if I go on somebody's boat, or whatever the case may be. And hopefully this video will help you simplify things, because after I was asked that question, I actually went through my uh, tackle box and realized I had a bunch of stuff thrown in there over time that I wasn't using. So cleared all that stuff out and now I have it much more simplified. So the box that I use, I'll go ahead and start with that. This is the, the uh, Plano Edge. This is the terminal tackle tray. And as you can see, there are plenty of compartments to put your terminal tackle in. And you can also put, you know, a handful of lures in there if you need to. And what I really like about these trays is that they come with these little boxes. Go ahead and open this up and show you. They come with these little boxes or compartments that you can put hooks into so they don't slide around inside of the box, which makes it really handy, especially if you, you know, want your tackle organized and you don't want everything getting mixed up. Another thing I like about this box in particular is that it's nice and slim. As you can see, it's very narrow, nice and slim, so it's easy to store on a kayak or if you're limited on space. So that works out really well. And the box is waterproof, so definitely a plus. Now, as far as what I actually have inside the box, you will notice that the majority of what I have in here is gonna be terminal tackle because I mainly use soft plastics. Soft plastics are going to be more versatile. You can cover you know, multiple areas of the water column, top, middle, bottom with soft plastics as opposed to hard baits where you would have to switch between different lures to get the right depth or you know speed that you want to work a lure so that's why i prefer to go with soft plastics and i'll show you which soft plastics i carry with me but as far as the hooks and jig heads go i have various sizes of weighted hooks as you can see right here these are all my weighted hooks i have owner twist locks in there Everything from a 1 16th to a 1 8th also have a quarter uh, ounce in there, depending on, again, you know, the depth. These weedless hooks are going to be great if you're fishing shallow and around structure. So that's why I carry those. Then I will have numerous sizes of jig heads. As far as color goes, I get that question a lot. I usually either just have plain silver or gray, and then red and chartreuse. I like chartreuse in dirty water. It just stands out more and then red works really well in dirty or clean water and then gray is sort of that neutral color which you can use under any conditions really and these jig heads that i have here these are the saltwater assassin pro elite jig heads the red and the chartreuse in a 1 8 ounce those are pretty much all 1 8 ounce and then when i have my uh, z-man jig heads here these are the trout eye and also redfish eye and i believe i have some swim bait eye jig heads in there everything from a 1 8 ounce up to a quarter ounce again so I can cover different depths of the water column and as you can see on some of these jig heads you know the length of the shank of the jig head is going to be a little bit different so if you're using a bait that's a little bit longer you can go with the longer shank which is the redfish eye and then if you're going for a smaller profile bait you can go with a uh, either a trout eye or they have now what they call swim bait eye, which is this one. A little different style of a jig head, but pretty similar to the trout eye. Then some more jig heads that I have with me are for the power prawn. Exclusively for the power prawn, these jig heads here. These are another lure that I always have with me. Power prawn in the uh, regular standard size and then the junior, which is a little bit smaller. And I'll show you that here in a second. But I always have, you know, various sizes of these jig heads for that lure in particular. Then I do carry a few extra inline hooks for my topwater baits or hard baits. Never know when one's gonna rust out or break or anything like that. And then circle hooks. Don't do a lot of live bait fishing, but always good to have some just in case you do end up going out on a trip and you pick up some bait. Everything from a two aught, four aught to a five aught circle hook should get the job done. And with circle hooks, you're usually sizing up the hook to the size of the bait you're using rather than the size of the fish you're going after. And over here, I have a few swivels. Again, if I'm fishing live bait, fishing deeper, fishing in current, I will have some swivels there and then also have some uh, rattles 
that I use with the power prongs as well. They can also be inserted into other soft plastics, again, just to modify those lures a little bit more and give them a different presentation. If you're fishing dirty water, rattles can be a great accessory there. Then as far as the lures go, now we'll get into the lures. I always carry some spoons. These are quarter ounce Aqua Dream gold spoons. These work really well. Uh, seem to work really well in the fall and the winter for redfish, snook, sea trout, and even flounder. You can catch some flounder on these as well. And I always carry a couple of those. Again, they fit in one little compartment here. Then as far as the hard baits go, talk about these. I carry a few Miradines. I don't use them very often. I could probably even get away with not carrying these at all. But I have a standard Miradine, which is this one here. Then I have the Heavy Dean, which is the Miradine, but a little bit heavier. So it'll cast further and also sink a little faster. Again, depending on the type of presentation you're going for. And then I do have a larger Miradine here. Larger one, more casting distance, bigger profile, depending on the time of year. And again, I could probably take these out. I don't use them too often. If there's one lure that I will always keep in my box here, it's going to be a topwater, a bone colored topwater, either Super Spook Junior or our Moonwalker, which is our uh, custom topwater that we have here at Salt Strong. Very similar to the Super Spook Junior, but much better price point. So if you're looking for some of them, you can find any of these lures on our shop page, any of these hooks. Uh, terminal tackle lures that I'm talking about. You can find all that on our shop page at fishstrong.com. And if you are one of our insider members, keep in mind that you do get up to 20% off everything on the shop page. So a couple more lures here, and then we'll get on to the soft plastics and other things that I bring with me. A bucktail jig never hurts to have in your box. This is probably one of the most universal lures out there. You can catch pretty much anything that swims on a bucktail jig. And this one here, I believe it's a half ounce, but a quarter to a half ounce would be ideal. So you can work uh, the shallows a little bit and also these dive down deep pretty quickly. So if you're fishing bridge pilings or deeper holes or anything like that, this can get the job done for you. And then lastly, I have these crab imitation lures. I have three of them. I have them separated because of the material they're made out of. It's a TPE material and you don't want to mix lures that are made out of that material. But this is the Chase Baits uh, Krusty Crab. This is a great lure to sight cast redfish, black drum, and also sheep's head with. And uh, I have caught some nice mangrove snapper on these as well. So this is a sand crab color. And then I have a mud crab color. I haven't really found that the color matters too much, but it doesn't hurt to have at least two colors in there. This is a mud crab, darker color. And that's pretty much all I carry in this box. Again, I only bring one tackle tray with me. I see a lot of guys that they'll bring one tackle tray full of terminal tackle, another full of lures, another full of you know weights and things like that. Not really necessary. Because if you can simplify, if you know exactly what you need for whatever trip you're going on, you know, depending on the trip, I might add some egg sinkers in here uh, if I'm using live bait and fishing deeper. But whatever you need, try to fit it all into one tackle tray. It'll definitely help you out and keep you more organized. Now on to the soft plastics. Again, like I said, this is what I use the most of. So I'm going to carry plenty of them. And what I like to do is instead of having, you know, multiple packs of one lure, I will put multiple packs into one bag so it's more compact. If I need some, I can just grab one bag or I can keep that bag out, put it in my pocket if I need it. And the lures that I have here are the Slam Shady Bomber, which is our five inch paddle tail. I will usually start carrying these around, you know, late summer and into fall when bait fish profiles are a little bit bigger. Uh, you know, you want to try to match the size of the bait to the bait that's in the water. So the five inch Slam Shady bo uh, Bomber works re uh, really well in the fall, you know, late, late summer into early fall and throughout fall. But when you see the bait fish start to disappear or become less abundant, that's when you want to, you know, dial down the size of your lure. So Slam Shady Bombers, always carry some of them with me. Then the Slam Shady 2.0, that's probably the staple lure. If I had to bring one lure, it would definitely be the Slam Shady 2.0, which is our three and a half inch paddle tail. And then another color 
of the same lure. You know, that's the three and a half inch paddle tail. We have that in a pink color, has some silver flake in there. This is the Fred, fooling redfish every day. Uh, as you can see, it is pink, so different color never hurts. And then the last pack of soft plastics here that I like to carry are the Alabama Leprechaun Jerk Shads. Great lures to throw, very shallow water, under you know calm conditions, cleaner water. These can work really well for redfish, sea trout, uh, flounder, even black drum. And I've caught some really nice tarpon, even hooked a probably 80 to 100 pound tarpon right in front of the kayak with this lure. So definitely a must to bring with you. And then some other soft plastics here. These are the power prawn shrimp. Shrimp imitations are pretty much good to use all year round in any conditions, any body of water, any region really, because everything in the water eats shrimp. We have the regular size, which is a larger size. These work really well. And then also the Power Prom Junior. This comes in a three pack. And these are very durable lures. That's why they only come in a two and a three pack. You can catch multiple fish on just one lure. So another staple item that I have in my tackle box. And then as far as leader material goes, you're gonna wanna have leader with you. I have 20 pound and 30 pound. And depending on the species I'm going after or if I'm fishing around heavier structure, you know, redfish, sea trout, flounder, black drum, you can get away with 20 pound. And then if I'm going after snook or tarpon, something a little bit heavier, more abrasion resistant, I will go with the 30 pound. And this is Berkeley Vanish, another leader that we uh, sell on our shop page at fishstrong.com. So again, you can pick some up there. And then lastly, some tools of the trade. You're always gonna wanna have some tools with you. I prefer to have pliers that have the cutter on them. These are actually the Danco Premio uh, pliers. They work really well, very durable. I've had these for, I believe, two years now, and they're still working very well. But what I found is sometimes with the pliers, you know, that cutting device, it can be a little bit of a pain uh, to use if you're in a hurry. So for something that's a little bit more precise, I like to have a pair of scissors. And these scissors in particular, they have a split ring tool on the very end. So if you need to swap out hooks on a hard bait or a topwater or anything like that, you can have that tool with you. And these are our scissors. We have these made for us. Again, you can find these on the shop page as well. So hopefully this video can help you out if you're trying to you know, minimize your tackle. Again, this was a question I got a lot recently. You know, What do I bring in my tackle box on a trip? It will change a little bit throughout the year. You know, Sometimes the fish are really dialed in on one thing for a certain time of the year and I'll minimize even more. I might only bring you know, one pack of lures with me because I know they've been working and I can catch multiple fish on them and have a good day and I can really simplify things down. So if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down below. And if you're new to Salt Strong, just know that we're the best online fishing club in America, especially if you're targeting redfish, sea trout, snook, or flounder. There's nothing else like it because we actually guarantee that you'll start catching more inshore fish while saving time and money. We do this through premium education, our exclusive insider fishing community, and huge discounts on the best tackle for saltwater anglers. To learn more, go to saltstrong.com. Otherwise, we hope to see you again soon.